Okay, I do have 635, and I'm going to call the Newport City Council meeting to order for Monday, March 1st, 2021, 630 p.m. Um, I'm just seeing, I don't see um, all members of the council, with the exception of Mr. Ross, are on the call. That includes Kevin Charbonneau, Melissa Pedersen, John Wilson, um, and my name is Paul Manette. I'm the mayor. And the next item on the agenda is the informational meeting regarding the bond vote. We have uh, Wayne Elliott with us. Um, oh, before I go on, in the council room, we have um, Laura Dogan, our city manager, James Johnson, our clerk treasurer. We have our department heads, Tom Bernier, Public Works, Travis Bingham, police, uh, police chief, uh, Jess. Jessica Booth, uh, Recreation Director, and John Harlemert, our Fire Chief. And with that, we will go on to the next item, which is the bond informational meeting. And we have Wayne Elliott from Aldrich and Elliott, who is here. And I will share my screen with a, a PowerPoint presentation. Some of this, for people who have been participating, is um, probably a repeat, but for those who are new, um, it's very informative, so just give me one second. Okay, can everybody, Wayne, can you see my screen? It's something, okay, yep. Yeah. Yep, we're good. Yep. All set then, Paul? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, why don't you just flip to the next slide? Yeah, so as Paul mentioned, this is a pretty similar presentation to what we did for the first public hearing. Uh, we've got Mike Maynard from my office is also joining us um, at the end here. We're tag teaming a little bit with the multiple public hearings. So um, I'll kind of run through the presentation. One of the things I'm going to do is we've gotten some specific questions from various people. Uh, there is a Q&A that's been posted up on the city website. And as I go through the presentation, what I'll try to do is kind of hit those um, questions and some of the responses as I go through this. So the first slide you can see on the left, uh, kind of the grayish map, that's really the city of Newport. You can see the bay, the uh, black outline is really the limit of the um, the city service area for the city uh, water system. Uh, the area we're kind of focused on as part of this project is the uh, easterly portion, which is the Derby Road. Uh, to the right, uh, the greenish photo, you can see the uh, lower portion of the roadway that's um, heading west to east on the uh, Derby Road. Uh, it's kind of the old Palin farm. You can see the driveway that goes up the uh, hill and the circular kind of yellow circular is the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. That's a, uh, a lined, um, lined water storage uh, tank. It's got a geomembrane floating cover. Uh, it's about 1.1 million gallons, uh, water level of about 928 feet. And it's pretty large. It's got a diameter, diameter of about 163 feet. Uh, next. So we're here for the second of the uh, public information meetings. Again, the first one was back on February 8th, and uh, we're here on March 1st. Uh, so the bond vote tomorrow, uh, in-person voting at the uh, Newport City Municipal Building, which is Tuesday, March 2nd. Uh, polls are open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, absentee early voting, of course, um, may be too late to request a ballot, but if you did request a ballot, um, they do have to be returned by the close of polls tomorrow, um, which is 7 p.m. on March 2nd. So there's three major components to the project. Uh, the first one is the uh, refurbishment work on the Palin Hill Reservoir, which is a circular um, item that you saw on the previous uh, map. The second, which is the larger component, is the uh, new east side water storage tank. Uh, booster pump station, transmission main and appurtenances. Um, and the third last piece of this is the uh, water um, meter installation. And then you can see over to the right, there's kind of a dashed uh, red vertical line. That's really 
uh, to the right or to the east of that is the Derby Road, and that's really the existing Palin Farm service area that we're primarily talking about tonight. Next. So the history is an important factor in this project. Uh, you know, it goes back to the late 1990s, uh, and there was a lot of discussion at the first public hearing, uh, you know, from city staff and others, um, council members, you know, and there's a lot of reasons of why the city wants to move this project forward. A lot of this has to do with the history of this area. Um, so back in 1999, the city wanted to provide uh, municipal water service to the Derby Road area. Uh, so they built, constructed a brand new water line. However, they couldn't um, provide adequate pressure and fire flow from the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. So they worked an arrangement with the village of Derby Center to um, supply water from the easterly direction. Uh, and that initial connection was governed by an interlocal agreement. Um, then in 2006, the village of Derby Center uh, modified their water rates to include a reserve water allocation fee. Uh, 2007, this isn't really specific to this project, but it's an important kind of um, infrastructure change for the city. Um, there's some new regulatory requirements. The city uh, constructed new wells and a water treatment plant, uh, and that was really required to remove arsenic. Um, then from 2007 to 2014, there was um, you know, pending ongoing litigation um, between the city of Newport and the village of Derby Center over the fees charged. Uh, there's a lot of meetings. There's been a lot of information put up about those discussions and the settlement. Um, well, obviously, the city of Newport spent a lot of time and money on attorney's fees um, during that period of time. So after that, the city really tried to look at some different options and, um, you know, primarily wanted to kind of separate or go in their own direction. Uh, so there was a bond vote held. The first one was back in 2017 in November. Uh, as part of that initial, the ending of the litigation, there was a separation agreement negotiated with the village of Derby Center and the city had um, paid 50000 to settle. Um, and then in addition to that, um, written into that separation agreement, which is a $30,000 payment, you know, when that um, final or official disconnection is made. That first bond vote um, didn't pass. Uh, it was a little bit of a different project scope and included a new storage tank, uh, which was on a different site uh, in the town of Derby side. Uh, and it included the uh, the upgrade work at the existing Palin Hill Reservoir, but it did not include water meters at that time. Uh, next. So some history about the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. You know, this is an important piece of the water infrastructure for the city of Newport. Um, back in the 1960s, it was constructed. It was an open top reservoir, um, you know, changing regulatory requirements. Um, you know, because of the health issues and concerns, you know, that's the treated water, um, primarily the treated water storage or one of them for the city system that provides both um, domestic and fire flow protection. Um, so to meet the state regulatory requirements, a floating cover was, uh, was added later. Um, and then in the late 1990s, that cover had to be replaced. Uh, and it served the city well for, you know, almost 20 years again. Um, but back in 2014, um, there was an inspection by the state and they indicated some concerns about the floating cover, the age of that in condition, and uh, you know, recommended and required that that would be replaced soon. And then further in 2019, there was another inspection by the state and they really indicated that that cover has reached the end of its useful life um, and really instructed and requested the city to start you know, working towards the replacement of that cover. So this is the uh, purpose and need for the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. You can see to the right, that's the uh, geo membrane, the kind of floating cover. Again, that's um, approximately 20 years. It's the primary water storage for the city. Mentioned previously, it provides about 1.1 million gallons. So that provides the domestic, uh, and then even more importantly, the majority of the fire flow for a lot of the city uh, water system that liner and cover there to really protect the treated drinking water, which comes from the wells now through the arsenic plant um, from contamination and public health issues, but it's really um, been through its useful life and uh, it needs to be replaced. 
Uh, so the project needs on the Derby Road east side storage area. Uh, the current agreement with the Village of Derby Center doesn't allow this allocate the city enough water to support long-term development in this area. Um, and it's very clear Derby has additional water allocation offer. Um, up to this point in time, they've offered a maximum of 10,000 gallons per day. Um, in the past year or two, the city's been using an average of about four or 5,000 gallons per day. But that area, the way it's zoned and um, planned, you know, that's um, really an opportunity. There's a great opportunity for the city to um, redevelop and continue to develop that area in the future. Uh, you know, and that has the added benefit of helping and um, supporting the city, city tax base. Uh, disconnecting from the villages Derby really reduces the long-term financial risk associated with the village water rates. Um, for the past 12 months, uh, we confirmed that the city has paid the village about $17,800 per year. Uh, and that also includes the surcharges, uh, the reserve water allocation fees that were in dispute for the excess water usage. So to kind of put that in perspective, you know, we've run through an estimate of what we feel the annual operating costs are going to be for this new infrastructure. And we have projected that at about $12,500 per year. Um, so if the city's paying the village $17,800 a year, we're projecting a savings um, moving forward of about $5,300, which would be to the uh, city of Newport's benefit. Um, the next one is, um, you know, there's been identified unreliable fire protection supplied by the Village of Derby Center. There was a fire um, a few years ago, and um, they found that they couldn't get adequate flow and pressure from that. And they found that there was one of the valves and, and the structure was, um, so they really couldn't pull sufficient fire flow. Um, and then the last piece, this new tank will allow the city to disconnect from this portion of the Village uh, Derby Center permanently. Um, and they'll be able to provide their own domestic and fire flow demand. So from the existing Pale and Hell Reservoir up through the pipe to the new storage tank, the, real, the city will be able to supply the water here moving forward, you know, and obviously have control of their own future here, both on allocation uh, and also um, operating costs. So one of the questions we got uh, for the existing Pale and Hill Reservoir alternatives is, you know, did we look at alternatives? And yes, the state and the funding agencies always require that alternatives be considered, especially for the uh, major items. Uh, you know, this is a very large reservoir, 1.1 million gallons. You can see the floating cover to the right that's um, slated for replacement. So the new cover and uh, liner is estimated to cost about 400000 uh, if we were to build a brand new 1.1 million gallon storage reservoir to site, you know, we're looking at almost $2.8 million. Uh, so that's a significant cost difference. And that was really a major factor in the consideration here. In addition, you'd have to build, um, you know, buy some additional property because you'd have to build the new reservoir separately because this needs to be uh, maintained service to provide the water demands and the fire protection for the city. So significant cost difference. Um, so for those reasons, really the replacement continued reuse of this reservoir was preferred because it's significantly uh, less expensive. So also for the uh, east side service area, you know, that includes a booster pump. We have to pump the water from the Palin Hill Reservoir up the existing uh, water lines. So we looked at um, different tank sites. And as I mentioned, the first bond vote was based more on a tank site in the Derby. Um, after that, the city uh, looked hard and explored and found a suitable tank site within the city limits. And that's identified as um, alternative number three. Uh, that's important because it really limits the work, eliminates the work needed in Derby. Um, it's actually closer to get to the existing water line. Uh, so we've got booster pump and we look at different types of tanks. Um, in this case, we really needed an elevated tank. Uh, there are different types of those, but because there isn't high enough ground elevation, uh, we have to raise the water up so we can get you know, adequate flow and pressure to this area. We look at different tank materials. We wanna make sure that you know, there's a um, reasonable good life cycle cost moving forward. Uh, and I mentioned also, we looked at the different tank sites and you know, there's land acquisition and other criteria in there, but it was really important that this tank site be uh, 
located the C. In addition, and really the key with this whole thing is we did look at um, other booster pump stations and that's a possibility in the short term. But ultimately, if the city really wants to fully develop this area over the next many years and um, have that available, the storage tank is really the better approach long term for the city um, from an operation and growth standpoint. So this gives you an idea of the proposed project relative to the storage tank. You can see the blue tank. That's an example of how this would look. Uh, very similar size. Uh, we're looking at uh, a tank that's about um, 36 feet diameter, uh, 210,000 gallons per day. Uh, and as I mentioned, we have a booster pump station down at the existing Palin Hill Reservoir that's gonna help fill this tank and uh, maintain the water levels in here. And then to the right here, you can see the, um, you know, where the existing tank would be located within the city limits. Uh, it's located on the East Main Equity uh, property. If you look to the right, you can see the entrance to Walmart. And then just below that, that's about the approximate uh, line between Newport and Derby. Um, and then we bring a new transmission, new pipe from the existing water line over to the new tank to feed that and also move water back into the existing water line. And that's about where the uh, separation of the disconnection would happen with the uh, village of Derby. Uh, water meter benefits, a uh, whole bunch of these, and this is something the city's been working on for a while. Um, you know, it's very important that all customers have meters, um, both residential and non-residential, uh, and it allows the city moving forward to develop an improved rate structure that's more equi equitable versus just charging, um, especially residential customers, a flat fee. People are there will be a base rate fixed free, but people will be somewhat paying more um, on what they use. And it really allows them to control a little bit further, um, you know, their, their water rates and what they're paying for water. Um, it also um, has the added benefit of um, water conservation, because once you start paying partially for the water you're using, um, you're a lot more careful on what you're using and it helps preserve system capacity and reduces operating costs. Uh, and it also helps the city that this is the biggest issue here is um, having water meters is required for the USDA rural development federal funding. So for this project and other projects moving forward by having the water meters, it allows the city to take advantage of the uh, federal, better federal funding opportunities moving forward. Uh, we also looked at many water alternatives, water meter alternatives. Um, the city's got about 1,850 connections. Uh, been very successful at installing water meters for the past several years. Um, so a portion of the system is meter. Uh, the city's been doing that with their own staff. They've been wire, buying the meters, uh, doing the installation. It's been extremely cost effective, uh, but there's about 765 remaining meters that need to be installed. Uh, we want to stay with a similar type. Some of those are going to be the more difficult installations. Uh, for example, if you have a commercial customer, it's, it's a much larger meter that's a little more uh, complex to install. And then if you have a home that doesn't have a full basement, you know, we're concerned about freezing. So in some cases, we have to actually put a fiberglass meter put in the ground to prevent, you know, keep the water meter uh, protected uh, below ground. And that adds costs. So, doing the water meters as part of this project, uh, you know, it has to be, it has to go out to competitive bid. The installation has got to be done by a, um, a licensed plumber, um, and that's also by using USDA funding. We we add in all the cross cutters, so we have to comply with things like um, wage rates and uh, American Iron Steel and those things. So. Um, it's a good way to get the water meters done and it qualifies for the city for significant grant dollars, but it's definitely um, more costly than the way the city's been able to approach this over the last several years, which has been very successful and uh, cost effective. So this is the proposed project summary. You can see to the right, that's the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. So a uh, new liner and floating cover. Uh, and then secondly, the major piece of this is the elevated storage tank and the booster pump station for the east side, the Derby Road service area. 
and then we finish off the uh, water meters uh, about 765, so the entire water system would be uh, would be fully metered. Estimated construction costs. So what we do, uh, this project is going to take about three years. Uh, so the highest priority, which would be slated for this year if the bond vote passes, is to get the work at the existing Palin Hill Reservoir at the liner and cover replaced this year. That's about $406,000. Uh, and then next year would follow the booster pump station, the transmission main, and the new uh, elevated storage tank. Uh, that's about $2,422,000. And then the following year, we would finish up the uh, installation of the water meters. So what we do is we take the construction costs and we also project that out to the uh, estimated or the projected uh, date of construction. So you can see uh, contract one for the Palin Hill Reservoir this year, uh, contract two, the storage tank next year in 2022, and then the water meters following in 2023. Uh, I was over here a couple weeks ago, and there's actually two of these pretty close by over in Champlain, New York. Uh, very flat over there, so they have to use these elevated tanks, uh, again, to maintain adequate pressure and also fire flow. So this is very similar, a little bit taller, but very similar size to what we would see for the uh, Newport project here. Uh, then we come up with a total project cost and bond vote amount. So the, uh, Total project cost is $4,985,000. Uh, you still vote for the entire project cost, you know, subject to reduction to um, state, federal grants and aids. Within the total project cost, we have the construction. Um, the state requires and USDA requires we carry a 10% construction contingency. Then we have the engineering services for putting together contract documents and uh, permits uh, and the bid construction phase service. And then we've got other costs in like permit fees, uh, land acquisition, legal, and short-term interest. So that all makes up the uh, total project cost of $4,985,000. So there's a couple of different uh, funding sources, but in this one here, we're primarily looking at the uh, USDA rural development. Uh, with the city's assistance, uh, an RD apply application was submitted back in December of 2020 uh, grants are eligible, the city's eligible for a grant because they're in the REAP zone of up to 75% of the total project cost. But typically for a project of this type, the average grant is about 40%. Um, one thing that's very important here is the um, a positive bond vote is required before they can issue a funding offer. Uh, the loan portion would be the balance of the cost and um, those interest rates are at an all time low. Uh, about 1.75% for a 30-year term. Uh, so then we're, again, looking, estimating a 40% grant with a remainder of the cost covered by the uh, by the loan. Uh, the estimated uh, annual loan payment is about $128,900, and that would be paid by the water customers. So all the city residents get to vote on the project, but ultimately the, um, the debt and the loan will be paid by the uh, by the water or the users of the water system. Uh, we're projecting about a $9.80 increase per quarter for the uh, typical residential customer. So project schedule, uh, the Palin Hill Reservoir liner replaced this year. Uh, next year, the elevated tank, uh, water line connection and booster pump station. And then the uh, following year, 2023, would be the uh, water meter installations. And here's the article, and uh, you know, again, the bond vote is uh, tomorrow, uh, and you have the ability to vote in person if you prefer, and uh, you know, all city residents can vote on the bond. Thank you, thank you, Wayne. Um, and with that, I am going to open it up to the public for questions this evening. Um, I ask that you be patient and um, one person at a time. And 
With that, I will open it up to questions. I have a number of questions. I'm Ann Shirello. I'm, I'm a resident of Newport. May I proceed, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, so I wanted to know whether or not um, the number of employee hours per week uh, to run the new water tower and the pumps and control the reservoir have been uh, estimated and in that $12,000 uh, per year fee that you suggested or amount that you suggested would be the operating costs. The staff is, is already there, so they would just do that as part of their kind of normal routine. Uh, the $12,500 per year includes, you know, things like electricity, maintenance, and chemicals and those kind of things. Um, the cost for the staff is already there. We're not suggesting that there's no need to add staff or anybody or hours, you know, so that's included within the kind of normal responsibilities of the uh, existing city staff. But would it be more hours than it is now or fewer hours than it is now uh, with the water tower? Well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be significantly more, but again, they're going to just check those things as part of their daily routine, and that doesn't add, um, you know, it doesn't add staff or add hours between what the guys are already covering out there. It's not a significant change. What about the insurance cost for insuring uh, a five million dollar water tower or a four million dollar water tower? would be above and beyond the $12,500 per year. And how much would it be approximately? Just a wild guess. I don't know that I have the answer. I don't have that answer for you. Okay. And um, would there still be like two ways of water running out of the Palin Reservoir or would all the water go up into the tower first and then out from there to supply every everything that it would supply. So the water right now goes up and out of the existing Palin Hill Reservoir. Uh, there will be a new pipe uh, connected there. So the water is going to go one way to a small booster pump station that's located next to the Palin Hill Reservoir. Uh, and then it's going to go in one direction, uh, part of the way, but ultimately all the way up to the new elevated storage tank located up, you know, the Walmart um, kind of derby Newport City line. Um, if the booster pump station is off, um, then those customers would be served directly off the elevated water storage tank. So in that case, the water would come from the tank backwards um, down the derby road um, to serve those customers. If the booster pump station is on, the water is going to be going in the derby direction. And not all of the water for the city is supplied by um, this would be supplied by the Palin Reservoir and this water tower. Most of the water that supplies the city comes from the wells uh, that are near Lake Memphremagog. Is that right? So the water comes out of the wells. It goes through the treatment system, and then from there it's pumped up either to the Palin Hill Reservoir or back towards the elevated storage tank on the west side of the city. And does the Palin Reservoir have a treatment center as well for that water? Well, no, the water is already treated down at the wells. So from there, it's just pumped up in the pipes directly up to the Palin Hill Reservoir. That, the water is all treated down at the wells. So where would the water that's in the Palin Reservoir be treated? It's already treated. The water in that reservoir comes from the wells down by the lake and the arsenic treatment system. So that water is already treated once it's taken out of the ground. It's pumped into the water system um, throughout, you know, based on demand and then ultimately to the two storage tanks. So that water's already been treated. Um, you have to have the cover over those reservoirs or have that to, again, protect the water quality um, from any type of contamination or surface contamination. That's the reason for the cover. 
because that water has already been fully treated. Now the cover itself that you intend um, that will re replace the current one and will replace, we're required to replace it whether or not this bond vote goes through. Um, is that made of plastic and do we have to worry about um, PFAs contaminating our water? Who's looking into what's that, that cover is made of? It's a, it's a geomembrane cover. Uh, you can't use PVC because it doesn't uh, work with sunlight. It will deteriorate um, quickly, so it's not suitable for this type of application. But this type of covering material uh, is all vetted and approved by the uh, American Water Works Association, uh, and it has to be suitable and comply with those requirements so that it's acceptable for use with potable drinking water. Um, and one further question. Are um, city Council sitting as the wa our water commissioners um, are supposed to control expenses for um, the, our entire water and sewerage system, um, but that they, they don't vote currently on the water budget. Um, would that in any way, if um, the federal people who are paying part of this loan or the banks paying part of this loan, if they knew that no one is really controlling expenses in the city of Newport by voting on a budget, which is all I've been, water budget, which is all I've been asking for for a while, would that in any, any way affect our ability to get a loan or to get the 30% or 40% uh, federal forgiveness or whatever it is? I'm not sure I understand your question because the city develops a water budget and that's got to be approved by the city council. Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll, I'll raise that a, a little bit later and I might have some more questions, but um, um, I'll, I'll give way to some other questions that might be want to be asked by other people. I just want to make it clear for Ms. Shirello, the City Council reviews the monthly budget for the Water Department, and that's, um, it's reviewed every month, and I believe Mr. Johnson, uh, Clerk Treasurer, um, has explained what enterprise funds are and how they operate, and the money that is coming in for the water rates, sewer rates, is what is needed to run the operations. You can't raise more, you can't raise less. You have to raise, you have to raise the funds to run the operation. It's treated just like, it's treated just like a business. That's how enterprise funds work. And so I, I just wanted to clarify that that the council gets. Matter of fact, we have it in that we have a thing right here that the council reviews the budget and it reviews the water. Every month we get this, and so. Um, I know that doesn't, that, I'm not going to go back and forth. I know it doesn't answer your question the way you a want it. A review is not a vote. A review is not a vote. A you vote have, they pay well, I'm, I, I, I'm going to let other people speak. I just wanted to okay. clarify. I'm going to, I just wanted to clarify. The budget is reviewed every month by the council. It's an enterprise fund. You have to raise the funds to pay for the expenses. And what is budgeted? The council reviews it when we we may not review it at a meeting, but the council does review it. It's what's necessary to operate that. Enterprise funds are run just like a business. You have to raise the funds to run the operation. But with that, I'm gonna with that I'm gonna go on to other people. Um, who would like to ask a question? I have some questions. This okay. Oh, please state your name for the record again, please. Jennifer Bierling. Okay, go ahead. Um, first, what is the life expectancy of the water tank? Wayne, is this, uh, oh, you, you muted yourself again, Wayne. Uh, we're expecting 50, 50 plus years. 50 years? Yeah, 50 plus. Second question, is the fixed rate of 1.75 on the loan amount a variable or a fixed rate? Uh, it is a fixed rate. 
it's all based on the um, USD adjust their rates periodically, you know, based on the existing water rates and the median household income of the community, but it is, it is fixed once the loan is issued. So over the course of the, I believe it was a 30 year term, is that correct? So over the course of the 30 year term, that 1.75 will not adjust in any way? So it's a fixed 30 year term. Okay, if I was understanding your uh, explanation correctly, you're saying that the source of the water for this water, proposed water tank, will actually be the wells that supply all of the water for Newport. Is that correct? Okay, your volume is very low and it's very difficult to hear you. Um, next, if I understood your explanation correctly, you're stating that there's only a total of 735 water meters that still need to be installed in the city of Newport? That's the number that the city has shared with us about what's remaining for installations, that's correct. And the installation of 735 water meters is going to cost one million and thirty-four thousand dollars. Correct. And as I mentioned, the reason for that is that it has to go out to bid. Uh, all those water meters have to be purchased. They have to be installed by licensed plumbers per state requirements. Um, they also include many of the more difficult ones. So we've got several commercial businesses in there. Um, not, it's not a typical five inch meter. You've got some that are two inch, three inch, four inch and larger. Uh, we've got some installations that are gonna require meter pits. So you've got a backhoe, you have to dig a hole, drop a fiberglass pit. And so it's a, it, it includes the more complicated ones. And um, again, because of the federal funding requirements, you know, there's the cross cutters, uh, wage rates, American Iron and Steel. Um, but again, the city's qualifying for potentially a 40% grant here as part of that cost. Um, and it does allow them to leverage or be eligible for these USDA funds moving forward. How many meters have been installed to date? I'm not sure if this is correct, maybe Tom would, but I know I had 1,850 service connections and we have an estimate of about 765 remaining. And how much was the cost associated with the 1,850 meters that have already been installed? Well, that, that wouldn't be available because the city purchased those meters directly uh, and they install those with city staff. So that was done with, you know, current city resources. So that cost wouldn't be tracked anywhere. And you're saying that in order to qualify for the, the bond, we can no longer use the city staff to make these installations. We have to contract it out. Yeah, because that's the requirement of the state federal program requirements. You have to go to competitive bid. Um, and then once you do that, it's gonna, the work's gonna be done by a licensed plumber. This, it, you cannot have this. I heard all of that. that. I heard all of that. There's no need to, to, to repeat it all. I just needed to know if it was a requirement of the funding structure for that process to unfold. And the answer is yes. Um, on the side of the water meters, the current pricing structure um, for the water meters is such that it was reverse engineered to create uh, a month, a quarterly bill for uh, a two person household that is identical to the current fixed rate bill of 1.71, and excuse me, $171.89. They were off by three pennies. Um, the reverse engineering resulted in a payment of 171.86. It was standing based on conversations uh, with those that were involved in the process that the, the planning commission for the rate structure uh, chose a two person household because that is the most common in Newport. Um, and that's how the 13,500 gallon amount per quarter was uh, set. And they're using the state average of uh, 75 gallons per day per person. With that said, because of this aspect of reverse engineering, 
what it means is that if you have a family of four uh, and they use 75 gallons per day, the state average, that their water bill is going to double. So the reverse engineering has aligned the, wa the, the rate structure for the water meters based on the, the segment of the population that is actually the lowest usage segment of the population. And they have aligned that to the historical fixed rate amount. Consequently, moving forward, the town can assuredly anticipate uh, somewhat of a windfall because there's going to be many other individuals with water meters that are going to have more than the two-person household usage. Um, the dollar amount collected by the town is not going to go down. It's definitely going to go up. So with that said, I'd like to know where that money is going to go. I would like to know if there's going to be a transparent accounting of the money collected through the metered system. And I would like to know why that additional amount that's going to be collected by the town is not going to be applied towards the water tower. Why is it that we as taxpayers are still being asked to contribute? I would respond in a couple of ways. I'm not sure why you think there's going to be more revenue generated to the water meters. Um, because one of the things you have to do with the water meters is everybody is not metered. So the city knows what they produce for water from the wells. Um, they do not know how much water they sell. Um, that information doesn't exist beyond, you know, those customers that are currently metered. Um, so what you need to do is wait till all the meters get installed. Uh, and typically, as I mentioned, people will start using less water, especially if they think that they know they're going to be paying on the usage side. So after collecting that data, then you have to kind of take a step back and see what the appropriate rate is for that. And that doesn't mean that the city is going to generate more income or revenue out of that. That's going to have to be balanced out and based on the water that this actual water volume that the city is selling each year well it's my understanding there is a rate schedule that's in place right now and for water the base rate is 2.812 per thousand the usage rate is 1.94 per thousand for the sewer the base rate is 4.72 per thousand and the usage rate is 3.26 per thousand when you add all of those together then you end up with a combined rate of Twelve dollars and seventy-three, uh, twelve point two per thousand. So there is but, a risk being charged to metered people right now. Yeah, but the city, but the, the city doesn't know how much water they're selling, so you can't figure out that number until the water meters are all in, everybody's metered, um, and then you've collected that data for a year or two. So that usage fee is going to be adjusted at some point. And then for those customers that don't currently have water meters, that flat rate or that, you know, flat fee, that's going to go away because everybody's going to be paying some portion on what they're using. Uh, the city just well, doesn't have that information. The flat rate is not going to go away until the rate structure, I mean, the flat rate is going to go away, but the rate structure is going to be what I just announced it to be until such time that the rate structure is amended. So when is the rate structure proposed to be amended? It would seem that after a month or two of having everybody installed on water meters that the city would know approximately, you know, how much water they are, as you say, selling. So when, it, when is the next proposed amendment to the, to the schedule? And is it going to try to re be reverse engineered back to a flat fee again? That defeats the whole purpose, defeats the whole purpose of this fair, equitable pay for what you use if you're reverse engineered back to the historical flat fee. Somebody else want to jump in here? I mean, you can't do anything or change to the rate structure until you have enough data collected from the water usage. Um, that means that the water meters are going to be installed in 2023. 
Um, and then you need to collect the data for a period of time to figure out exactly how much water you're selling to your customers. And you can't do that over a month because water usage varies throughout the year. People use more water in the summer than they do in the spring because they're watering gardens and you know washing cars and all that kind of stuff. So you need to collect some data before you can you know readjust or um, you know relook at that usage fee. That's just it's going to take some time, and the city isn't going to be in a position to do that until the water meters are all in, completed, and everybody's metered. Mr. Mayor, this is Melissa. May I just say something? So it seems to me that it, we're in a transition period, and I think that's pretty obvious that moving from a flat rate system where we're, and we're hybrid right now, some people are metered, some people aren't. So at this point, we have a hybrid system of how we charge. And certainly, as we've all discussed before, it is not equitable, be, just because it's not equitable, because some people are playing fat flat fees and can use as much water as they want, other people are paying for what they use. So by transitioning, and this is what's important, I think you're missing the point, Jennifer, is that this is a transition period. So we move from one to the other, we move from this, you know, it used to be all flat fee, we transitioned into this hybrid model, and now we're going to transition into a fully, excuse me, metered process. In order to do that, I think anyone who's worked with um, transitions and moving from one process to another process knows that you can't just arbitrarily take a little bit of data and make a sound decision. I think uh, Wayne is right when he says that we need to have at least a year of data to be able to look at, to see what water usage really is over the course of the year. And when we have that data at that point, then we look at the rate structure again and we say, okay, and what's really happening here? Rather than trying to transition in and to just sort of arbitrarily decide what people are going to be using. Um, I, if you're frustrated with that, I, I guess I can, I don't know if I understand it exactly, but I understand people have frustrations with things. Um, often things that move in different directions that people don't want them to, uh, causes a lot of frustration for folks. But again, I just have to say again, this is a transition project. We're moving from one system to another system and transition in order to get the information we need to adjust appropriately, we need to collect the information before those adjustments can be made. Thank you. I just, oh, thanks so much. Just a second, I, um, Hold on, um, one, one person at a time. I was just going to interject. I've had a meter, just to let you know, for three years or since they went in. And it took me a year, almost a year and a half just to kind of, now I know what I use for water every quarter. But it took me a year and a half to kind of figure out because my bill, um, now I know I definitely use more in the summer. But my bill actually, I'm, it's just me in the house and I'm actually saving on, on water, on the, on the cost. Uh, I, I'll be very upfront. My last water bill last quarter was only $114.80. Um, and my highest water bill, I think last summer was $122. I mean, that's below the, it's below the minimum non-metered use. It's below the, what people are paying who aren't metered. But it took me a year and a half to kind of figure out, just for my own personal use, estimating my water cost. Um, and so I have to reiterate what uh, Ms. Pedersen was saying about taking time to figure out the average use um, in the city of Newport. So I just wanted to use my own experience um, just to let you know that. But Mr. Minnett, you are one person. And because of the reverse engineering of this price schedule the, with this base rate being like a, a false floor up to 13,500 gallons then then that's not where the problem lies the problem lies with families in Newport that are going to use beyond 13,500 gallons because once you start going over the 13,500 gallons you get hammered with the current rate schedule and I mean hammered because you don't just have the usage rate any longer of the 1.94 and the 3.26, 
you're also getting charged per thousand, the 2.812 under the water and the 4.72 under the sewer. And for families, they're likely going to use more than the 13,500. That amount was based on the state's average for a two person household. So I'm happy that you're saving money, Mr. Manette. That's a good thing. But the rate structure is set up to really tuck it to families in Newport. And if they do use a family of four, the state average amount, their water bill is going to double, double. And in reference to how much water you folks are selling, you know in the aggregate what right now, or one should assume that you should, because you likely know how much your wells are producing, and you likely know how much water is running through your sewage plant. So in the aggregate, you have these numbers available to you currently. You don't know specific to each customer what they are, but you know what they are in the aggregate. Is that correct? Wayne, you're the expert on that. Well, you're the mayor. You should be able to answer these questions. Uh, Mr. King, I did not call on you. Please do not interrupt. I asked Mr. Elliott. He is the expert with the water and sewer. He is the engineer. No, the city does not have that information. And I've been through several of these projects. And you have to, you know, the transition is a great term for this. Um, you need to have the data before you can readjust or look at those rates. Um, and that can't happen until everybody's metered. First of all, you produce X amount of water at the wells. Um, you're correct. We do know what that number is. For an older water system, um, that can vary anywhere from 20, 30, 40% between what's produced and what's actually being used at the households. Um, and that has a, you know, bearing a lot of factors as far as age of water lines and all those kind of things. So because only a portion of the city is metered, um, we do not know what, how much water the city is actually selling. Uh, and then separately you have the wastewater treatment facility and you do have flows there, those are metered. We know what's being treated there. However, that takes in flow from Derby, um, that takes in weather, what weather influence, all other kinds of factors. So those are three completely different set of numbers and you cannot make any assumptions um, either on the water produced or the wastewater treated to try to pack into you know, how much water the city is selling. Um, you just have to wait, get the water meters in and then collect the data. Um, and then we look at the rates based on that to make sure you're generating enough income to you know, cover your expenses. So when you talk about the age of the water lines being a factor and not knowing how much the of the water being produced by the wells is actually being sold to the consumers, are you suggesting that there's potential leakage going on in the infrastructure? common with any Vermont municipal water system. Um, best case, that's 15%. Some of the older communities, it's, it's as high as 40% plus. Um, and we just don't know what that number is until you meter to exactly what what's sold to the customers. And we aren't gonna know that until everybody's metered. And then my final question has to do with the uh, sewer charges. Uh, okay. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, um, this is about the water bond. It's not about sewer, so well, I'm going to I'm going to stop you there because we have, Minnette, no, we, have, excuse me, we have a lot of other people, and this is about the water bond for the water tower. It's not about sewer charges, and so I'm going to have to stop you there. Hi, Mr. Minette, but you actually tie the sewer to the water charges. They are not inseparable. You charge the sewer based but on this the is, But this is an informational meeting about the bond for the water tower. And the so the information for the alternative. The charges that I'm going to be charged are based on my water usage. And then you apply the sewer charges to that water usage. You cannot tell me that they are separate charges, Mr. Manette. And but we're talking, but no, but we're talking about the bond for I the water tower. That. We're also talking. So we are talking about the rate structures for the sewer. We're talking about the installation of water meters. Provide as the alternative cost. Stop muting. You know, you can't tell me we're not talking about the bond because you're talking about the installation of the water meters. 
and the installation of the water meters involves the rate structure of the metered water. And the rate structure of the metered water is based solely on water coming in. It is not based on sewer going out. Because I, my conversation with the town is that they are refusing to put in sewer meters as well as water meters. And the sewage rates are double what the water rates are. And as a result, any water that doesn't actually get put back down into the sewer system, I am going to be charged for at double the rate of my water usage. And I want to know why the water usage is the determinant factor. Why sewer is not being installed so as to separate out the difference between what is coming in and what is going out. Wayne, um, the, as far as the sewage, it does cost, I know it costs more to operate the wastewater plant than it costs to operate the water system. The wastewater plant has a much higher um, expense to operate versus the water system. It is my understanding that that is, the, that is why your um, wastewater rates are higher than um, the regular water rates. It costs a lot more to operate that plant. Am I correct, Wayne? Yeah, that's correct. But the issue is not the cost of the sewage treatment itself. The issue is that I'm being charged as though all of my water coming in is going through the sewer plant, which is not true. And I'm asking why. That, that's with everybody though. How do you differentiate between every single home and business? You got people using water, water gardens to wash cars and all other types of things. That's, that's with everybody. Um, and you need to keep these rate structures simple. You can't start, um, making them so complicated or factor on that every, everybody uses water that isn't necessarily going down in the sewer so that's consistent with every single customer well why don't you put in sewer meters uh do you want to you could spend another two and a half million dollars measuring sewer accurately is 10 times harder than uh, measuring water, and you're also thinking about what you're discharging your sewer system to try to measure that accurately. Um, that's just an un unnecessary cost because you've got the water meters. Um, that is the most common equitable way to do that is you're using how much water people are actually using, and that's the basis for the usage rates. Um, and that information is used to develop the water rates and also the sewer rates. Uh, that's the way it's always been done. It might have always have been done that way, but that does not mean it is fair and equitable. Someone who lives in a condo and is not able to have a garden or anything is not going to use as much water as somebody who is an avid outdoor and, and planting lots of flower beds and watering their flowers. It, it's not fair and equitable. That's the bottom line. And I guess what I'm hearing from the town is that you're you're acquiescing to the fact that it's not fair and equitable, and that is what you're going to adopt as the policy, a non-equitable, a non-fair policy. It is fair and equitable, and it passes the legal test for how those rate structures are done, not just in Newport, but any other Vermont community. So Wayne, this is a question that I'm going to ask. How many communities, most communities in the state of Vermont have a water rate and a water meter. They don't have sewer meters, correct? Except for large commercial industrial applications like a, a brewery or some kind of dairy waste. That's correct. Okay. Why does the bill... Okay, ma'am, 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 I'm going to have to ask you, I've got to move on to other people. Um, other questions from other uh, people who are connected to the call this evening regarding the bond and questions for Wayne Elliott. Yes, this is Carl King. You had mentioned at the last meeting you were to provide the alternative cost, uh, and yet you have avoided that. Can you please provide that? I believe Wayne did provide that in the PowerPoint. He provided. I'm not sure we really got down to the brass tacks on that one. What were, the, what were the dollars? 
the alternative costs were provided for the um, Palin Hill Reservoir option. You said for pumps as a, a different option. What were the costs for that? That might that is, save that, the that is, city money. That question is addressed on the Q&A under item number three. Uh, the uh, the cost for the pumps was about 750000 So if you go on the city website and look at the Q&A, that's addressed under item number three. Other questions? What development, you, what development do you think is going to build here in Newport that necessitates the, the emergence of this being rushed so fast? Mr. Mayor, that's to you directly. Do not defer. I'm not deferring. I'm going to answer the question if you give me a chance. This has not been rushed. This has been this first presented back in December. It's been talked about since 2017. So this has not been rushed. Um, the information has been out there for everyone. A mailing, a, a mailing was done to all the water users um, in the last bill that included a flyer on it. This is the third meeting that Mr. Elliott has joined us to go through his presentation. Um, so it has not been rushed. As far as development, we have 120 acres on the east side of Newport that could potentially be developed. Um, and if I was in discussions Has with the contact, did you give indications that they're going to develop the necessitates to build that tower? I talked to developers. They contracted in with their development contract. There is no development contract at this point. We are looking to the future. I have had developers come to me, but I'm not at liberty to discuss it publicly. And so. That's one thing that you cannot discuss publicly until there's a signed agreement and all that. And so, but there are people looking at, at the city of Newport. And what about the hold? Do you think that's a distractor that will take away from the value? We're not of talking about Main Street at this time. No. I'm done. Okay, Thank other, you. other questions from people who are on the call? I don't appear to hear any more questions um, from anyone who is on the call for Wayne Elliott regarding the bond. Um, does anyone from the city council have anything they would like to add? Mr. Renette, given that there are no additional questions, can I finish my final question? If it's related to the bond and the water tower, that is the that is my uh, that's what it has to be related to. We're not dis we're not discussing sewer rates. We're not discussing that aspect this evening. We are discussing the bond related to the water tower and the water cover and the new uh, new uh, reservoir cover and the water meter installation and the water meter installation. Okay. And coming with the water meter installations is the price structure that is attached there too. You cannot say it's not part of the bond. It is. So with that said, excuse me. Yes. I, I what is um, make it very brief because I've given you uh, plenty and, of leeway and, and nobody else waiting to ask a question though, Mr. Manette. Not taking somebody else's place. So uh, I would let the public to, speak. I would like to ask Mr. Elliott if it is very commonplace to simply structure a water meter system on water usage alone, then why is it our rate structure is divided? Why don't we simply base it on water usage alone? Very few uh, municipalities uh, structure their water rates on usage only. Um, there is also always a, uh, a base rate or fixed portion of that and the rest on the usage. 
and the reason for that is that you have the fixed costs of running the water system. Um, you know, regardless of how much water you treat or sell, um, you know, you've got the treatment costs, you've got the staffing, you've got all those other related costs. Uh, if you just based your water rates on usage only, uh, you would have a huge challenge of setting your rates from year to year. Uh, if you look at what the water, you know, the, the city typically produces, um, varies year to year, and it's primarily because of weather. Uh, you know, it's a, a dry year, people are using a lot more water, um, and that's something that the city really can't control. So you want to have a portion of that in a base rate or fixed rate, and then the other part of that is, is really on the usage on what you're really selling for water and what people are actually using each year. But the base rate... Hello, hello. Mr. Hey. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Yes. Uh, I've been trying to get in for quite a while, and I get no response. It's like what I want to say is, is, is like I'm, you're not hearing me. Hold on. So I went, I, I hung it, up and then went back. I'm sorry. I think it's because I hit something on here. Hold on. Okay. I've, I've got a lot of people. I'm trying to run the meeting, run the technology. Well, I've and, been listening to all of that, but I've got a... It, Unmuted. It, uh, towards the bond. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Okay. Yeah, but they don't Who have else is... Who's talking? Okay, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, when I see this, and I had a, a gentleman ask me this this weekend, um, if this bond goes through we're, uh, for the funding scenario, we're saying it's a $9.80 increase per quarter for a typical residential customer. Yes? That, that is correct. That's me. That's me. I have a fixed rate. So instead of one seven, I'm looking at 180 Does that include you, Mr. Mayor, who pays a little less than I do because you don't use the water? And yes, more sir. importantly, if a person owns, and back, right back to the landlord issue, he owns a eight-unit structure. Does he only pay $9.80 more per quarter under under his billing? I believe this like is... You, you, you're going to pay the nine eighty, and I'm going to pay it. It's right. It's the fixed cost. Am I correct, Wayne? It's the fixed cost. We all pay a base rate fixed cost. I pay a base yep. rate. Everybody pays a base rate, whether you're right. metered or not. Well, the non-metered pay a flat rate, but there's a base rate included in your flat rate, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, yeah, well aware. So right. it's across right. the board then. Right, it's nine dollars and eighty cents per quarter. Um, on the, it's basically it's the fixed yep. cost to operate. And so yep. yes, I will be paying the same nine dollars and eighty cents as you. And to go back, uh, and this was a long time fight too, an apartment building owner, uh, he's a one customer. Yes, he pays for the water to go through, but he's got eight people, eight uh, units using that water. He's still only looking at a 980 increase in his base rate. Right, because... That's what this individual is asking me. Um, the it depends right i believe that's <laughs> correct yes that is correct because if you only have one meter for the entire apartment building yeah it's, yep. that. it's not okay just a, yeah yeah I so think all right appreciate I mean, has to be I'm, I'm glad i'm back with you yeah it was i thought i had un unmuted you sorry other Mr. questions Mayor, go ahead Mr. Mr. Carbino. go ahead there's been a lot of discussion about the water meters, and I think it's important, I'm not mistaken, that we already voted to install water meters in the city of Newport. Is that correct? That is oh. correct. That is correct. But so, the discussion that we are having, the water meters are not tied to the water tower vote. It's a separate thing, and the rates for the water meters are subject at the time. Uh, actually, Kevin, we voted, uh, Mr. Shravino, we voted to install water meters so that we could qualify for the USDA funding 
um, where they we voted to install water meters so we qualified for the USDA funding um, which basically they would pay up to 40 percent of the entire project and of course we got the 1.75 percent interest that is correct and it is separate from this water tower though that well, is correct. Uh -oh. The well, the uh, we have to install the water meters to qualify for the USDA. Correct, Wayne? Yeah, he shook his head. Yes. Um, the bond amount includes the also the installation of the water meters. Right. So. Um, I was under the assumption when we voted on this that they were going to be installed regardless of what the bolt on the tower would be. Well, they are, but... Yes, we, we voted to install water meters, and if I believe bond or no bond, we were going to continue installing water meters because we've been doing it, and people have signed up to have them installed, and so whether we have the bond or no bond, I believe we were going to continue on the time frame of installing them. Tom Bernie, our public Tom Bernie, our public works director, could clarify that, but I believe relevant goals. Um, that is, we, a, that uh, is accurate, Mr. Mayor. This is Laura Dalgan speaking, and you're right on the money. We've been installing them, and and we're currently installing them as well. The more we can install, uh, you know, the the uh, list the uh, bond vote will be the bond amount the bond amount okay uh, okay kevin yeah okay mr mayor i had a question before i go back before i go back can i just double check real quick i haven't forgotten about you miss shirley i just want to make sure, since I accidentally muted everybody and didn't realize they couldn't unmute some of them, I just want to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Okay. Other people um, who wish to ask Wayne Elliott a question about the bond or the water tower? Okay, then we'll go back to Ms. Shirley then. John raised an interesting point. I just wanted to clarify, what about some of the commercial people? Um, for instance, uh, the lumber company or the furniture company or the hospital, are they only going to pay 980 a quarter for, the ex or for all the water that they use? in comparison with what we individual uh, people, homeowners are paying? I believe that is correct, 